The next extremity, the next part of the extremity we're going to do is a forearm fracture. Forearm, mid shaft fracture of the forearm. Um, and again, my patient should have, will hopefully be standing with his arm in front of him. Um, I'm going to have my partner come in and hold stabilization, and I will work around my partner. Um, for the for materials for this, I need um, three three cravats plus two more for the sling and the swath, and I have a board splint. Uh, board splint has two sides, one is padded and the other is hard. You do not want the, the board side, you want the padded side against the patient. If you put the board side against the patient, it's an automatic fail on the national exam. Uh, my partner is holding stabilization. I'm going to come in and I'm going to take this splint and I'm going to put it right under my patient's arm and I'm going to have my partner, my patient, grab the end of the board. What that does is it keeps that arm flat against the board with no voids um, and it maintains that hand in a position of function. My partner is holding the, holding the board for me and I'm going to use three cravats to hold this board in place. The fracture is right here. So I want one above the fracture, and I want to loop it around once, and then back through again, and I want to tie it with that surgeon's knot we talked about, go through once, go through a second time, and I want to tie it against the board. I don't want, want to be tying knots against my patient. I want to make sure it's fairly tight, and tie it a second time. Second goes on the other side of the fracture. So remember the fracture is mid-shaft, I want to go just above it. And the idea is to stabilize this bone above and below the site of the fracture. I'm going to tie it again with that surgeon's knot, and I'm going to tie it against the board. And I want a third, a third cravat and I want it to go across the hand. And the reason I want it to go across the hand is because I don't want that patient moving his hand because as you can see, every time he moves his hand, that's the, that broken bone, the ends will rub together and start um, destroying tissue and pos nerve ends and uh, blood vessels. So I want to take this, loop it through. I want to put it through the thumb. I don't want it over the thumb. And again, tie it underneath against the board. And again, I'm using a surgeon's knot. I don't need it super tight. I just need it to be snug. And now my patient's got his, got a, got his, his, his arms immobilized, but now I need some support. My partner's still holding stabilization. And now I'm gonna tie that, that sling again, um, take the long side, Take the corner against the opposite, the longest side, tie it, um, and again, I'm just doing a sling the swath like we did in the first video. One side up over the end, the other side, I'm going to grab the board and put it on. And I'm going to tie this again with a surgeon's knot and a piece of padding behind for patient comfort. And that's supporting the arm, but I don't want this arm to move back and forth, so I still need to secure it with a swath against the patient. So I'm coming down up. I'm going to catch this by the wrist. I don't want it on the, on the side of the, the fracture. I'm going to catch the wrist. Again, a piece of padding. And I'm going to tie the surgeon's knot. Pull it tight. Have my patient inhale, snug it down, tie it a second time. I'm going to come in, my arm is secure, I'm going to come in, I'm going to check for a radial pulse to make sure that I didn't tighten this so much that I didn't, that, that I occluded the pulse, um, and I'm going to check for CSMs, can you feel me touching? I do. And, do you, and I'm going to check for capillary refill. You have 10 minutes. Again, the object is to keep nothing, is not to 
impede that broken bone um, so that it's above and below and that swath while it's holding the arm in is not touching that that mid shaft humor uh, mid shaft forearm fraction 